Michigan lawmaker Rashida Tlaib isn't about to stay quiet as moderate Democrats attack the progressive wing of the party. After several congressional losses, these moderates decided that it would be a great idea to blame the progressive members of their party who all won re-election easily by running on progressive values. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Rashida Tlaib has decided, mm, no, I'm gonna say something, this is disgusting. She didn't say this is disgusting, that was my added emphasis. So she says the following, we're not going to be successful if we're silencing districts like mine, said Tlaib, who told her colleagues something similar during a contentious call last week. Me not being able to speak on behalf of many of my neighbors right now, many of which are black neighbors, means me being silenced, I can't be silent. And what she's referring to there was the meltdown that Representative Abigail Spanberger had during the call where she spoke out against defund the police. She felt that that was a losing message, she was angry about it. She was angry about what she referred to as this push for socialism. What she was really angry about was that Republicans and you know her political opponents campaigned the exact way that you would expect them to campaign. They're gonna call you names, they're gonna accuse you of being a socialist. Whether you're a socialist or not, they don't care about the truth, they don't care about the facts, they don't care about what you actually campaigned on, they're gonna call you names. Names. The question is, are you playing you know, uh, offensive politics? Do you have a message that resonates with your constituents? And if you've lost your reelection bid, or if you came close to losing, maybe recalibrate what your own flaws are rather than finding some other scapegoat within your party. That's my take, um, yeah. but Rashida Tlaib seemed to say something similar, John. Yeah, uh, the problem isn't the Republican attacks uh, because those are always going to be there. If there hadn't been defund the police, there would have been something else. Uh, there would have been a caravan of people coming. There would have been, pro I mean, they were doing all of that anyway. They're going to attack you. That's not the problem. The problem is, and, and AOC tried to point this out when she tried to help them in the last weeks of their, their race to, to actually put out ads, to engage online, all of that. They don't really do that. They can't actually control the message. They often don't try, and when they try, it's not effective. And that is an even the problem. The problem is they can't be effective with their messaging because they don't really stand for much. Right. And they're not really pushing for much. So yes, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get people behind you. Um, AOC and others like her, and including Rashida Tlaib, by the way, who are awesome at generating attention and interest in all of this stuff. It's not just random and it's not just because of their handle or their nickname, it's fundamentally about what they represent. And if you don't represent anything, it's gonna be hard to do that. And that's why people like Spanberger, the problem isn't just that they're being attacked and it's not just that they don't have the ads, it's that there's really nothing to work with if you're not going to push for anything. No, that's exactly right. And as I've made, you know, I've made this point before, um, corporate Democrats, because of the organizations, corporations, and corporate donors um, that help fund their campaigns have shied away from an economic populist message. So instead, they typically like to focus on social justice related topics in order to do their campaigning. If they're gonna go ahead and um, attack the messaging coming from Black Lives Matter, I don't really know what they plan on campaigning on. Like, what are you providing to your constituents? What are you willing to do for them? What is your message? As John mentioned, like, what do you stand for? Yeah. Rashida Tlaib also told Politico, we're not interested in unity that asks people to sacrifice their freedoms and their rights any longer. And if we truly want to unify our country, we have to really respect every single voice. We say that so willingly when we talk about Trump supporters, but we don't say that willingly for my black and brown neighbors and from LGBTQ neighbors or marginalized people. I, I totally agree with her and she, you know, she had more to say, one more quote from her because I think her statements were strong. She says, if voters can walk past blighted homes and school closures and pollution to vote for Biden Harris, this is the best point, I think. When they feel like they don't have anything else, they deserve to be heard, Tlaib said, choking up as she expressed frustration near the end of an interview this week. I can't believe that people are asking them to be quiet. And um, among people who seem to be asking them to be quiet is centrist representative Hakeem Jeffries who said this, do we wanna win? Do we wanna govern or do we wanna be internet celebrities? I think it's a useful conversation for us because the socialism message wasn't helpful. But it's just, it's fascinating that the candidates who ran on that kind of messaging, right, on economic equality, 
easily won, easily won. So why not ask yourselves why it is that these centrist Democrats are having such a difficult time getting elected? Because again, it's a given, this is something that will not change. Republicans are always gonna attack them. They're always gonna lie about them. The fact that they're not prepared to respond to those lies with a message that resonates with their constituents is the problem. Yeah, yeah. I. And look, we can try to push back against them, we can do that. But the most effective way, both in theory, also demonstrated in the past few election cycles is to primary. Like I know some people are going into these next few years saying, okay, we're gonna be watching to accrue a list of people to primary. I don't even think it should function that way. I think everybody should be on that list and you get off that list by doing the right thing. The, the assumption shouldn't be that they're going to because the vast majority aren't. And it's gonna be difficult to find all of those candidates. We're gonna lose a lot of those races, especially in the Senate, but we just have to keep doing it because these people, like fundamentally, they're obviously better than Republicans and we're going to support them in the general election if that's who we have, but let's make it so that we don't and let's not wait. Let's not wait to find candidates for the midterms. A lot of these representatives, we should be finding people to replace them right now. And I'm gonna end this with two poll results that I think are important. Fox News exit poll asks, what should happen to illegal immigrants? 72% of American citizens or American who responded to this poll said, pathway to citizenship, only 28% want deportation. The same poll asked, change to a government run healthcare plan, like Medicare for all, 72% favor it, only 29% oppose. Just some relevant stats and responses that Hakeem Jeffries might wanna look into. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.